Hello and welcome to yet another video on Catalyst YouTube channel. In this video, we'll talk about Van Maxec on the Catalyst 9000 switches. A quick introduction about myself. My name is Manish and I am a technical marketing engineer with the Catalyst 9000 business unit. So to start off, let's talk about what an enterprise campus architecture looks like today. So if we talk about an enterprise campus architecture, it is no more siloed to a single campus environment. What we see is there are multiple campuses, there are multiple branch networks, and top of it, we have applications that are hosted on cloud, applications that are hosted on data center, and all over the place in the network. So in order to ensure we have secure connectivity across all these different segments. What we need is a end-to-end -end security solution for the campus environment. And basically Catalyst 9000 integrates all those features, all those solutions that provides an end-to-end -end secure connectivity and end-to-end -end secure campus. So if we look at the security requirements, from a transport security perspective, the very first thing that comes into the picture is basically establishing a secure connection or secure channel within your campus itself. And that is where the LAN MAXEC comes into the picture, which provides point to point or hop by hop encryption within the devices in your campus or in your branch network. Then another requirement is basically establishing a secure connectivity or a secure channel from your campus or your branch towards your application hosted on cloud or any other network segment that is reachable via internet or your service provider in between. So that is where IPsec comes in handy. It provides that layer three encryption that is needed to access all these applications or these network segmentation securely over an encrypted channel. And last but not the least is a requirement wherein you require high speed or high bandwidth secure connectivity over a layer two extension. It could be your campuses, it could be between your campus and your branch network. And that is where WAN Max comes in handy. And this is where we'll focus on for the rest of the video as well. So now let's talk about what is WAN MAXEC. So WAN MAXEC in very simple words is an extension of LAN MAXEC that is designed to secure ethernet links over a public or a shared network. So while our traditional MAXEC is commonly used in a local area network to protect data between directly connected devices, WAN MAXEC applies similar encryption methods to safeguard data as it travels multi-hop or over a public carrier ethernet network. And thereby enabling various use cases wherein WAN MAXEC can be either leveraged in an MPLS interconnect for an L2 MPLS, or it can also be used as a campus interconnect or a hub and spoke design leveraging the E-Line or E-LAN services that are provided by the public carrier ethernet or the service providers. So now coming to another very important question that comes up too often is how LAN MAXEC is different than WAN MAXEC. So talking about the LAN MAXEC first, so LAN MAXEC in very simple terms was designed for local area networks. It works well in a contained environment to provide secure point to point connections on a single LAN segment. However, on the WAN MAXEC side, basically WAN MAXEC extends this encryption capability to wide area networks, making it perfect for securing multi-hop connections over a public or a carrier provided network. So while LAN MAXEC is ideal for local links, WAN, Mac is, WAN MAXEC is something what we need for connecting multiple locations over a longer distance such as between your campuses, between your campus or branch, or between your campus or data centers. Also, if we look at how they handle VLAN tags, so if we talk about LAN MAXEC, so basically LAN MAXEC secures both your data payload as well as your VLAN tag, and that works well in a single hop or point-to-point -point scenarios. However, in case of WAN MAXEC, we have a capability to have your VLAN tag in clear, thereby enabling data pass through 
वाया योर पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट और वाया योर पब्लिक कैरियर इथरनेट नेटवर्क सो नाउ दैट वी नो वॉट इज वैन मैक्स एक्ट लेट्स स्पेंड सम टाइम एंड सी वाई डू वी नीड वैन मैक्स एक्ट सो इफ यू लुक एट द एंटरप्राइज कैंपस ट्रेंड टूडे वॉट वी ऑब्जर्व इज द लिंक स्पीड आर गोइंग बियॉन्ड हंड्रेड के प्लस टू सपोर्ट दोज नेक्स्ट जनरेशन एप्लीकेशन लाइक क्लाउड सर्विसेज लाइक वीडियो स्ट्रीमिंग दैट रिक्वायर्स हाई बैंड विथ और हाई डेटा रेट एंड इफ वी कंपेयर इट विद आर ट्रेडिशनल और करंट आई पी सेक इंजन और इनक्रिप्शन इंजन विच आर प्रेडी मच टाइड टू द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द प्लेटफॉर्म एंड आर मच लेसर वैन वी कंपेयर विद आर स्विचिंग और राउटिंग फॉरवर्डिंग और थ्रू पुट सो दैट इज वेयर वैन मैक्स इट कम्स इन वेरी हैंडी वेर एन इट कैन प्रोवाइड लाइन रेट केपेबिलिटी और लाइन रेट इनक्रिप्शन फॉर दोज कनेक्टिविटीज बिटवीन योर कैंपसिस बिटवीन योर ब्रांच नेटवर्क बेसिकली टू इनेबल दोज नेक्स्ट जनरेशन एप्लीकेशन or high bandwidth traffic that we usually see in our campus networks today so moving on now we'll talk about some of the enhancement that we have brought into 802.1a for van max act so the first enhancement is dot 1q clear tag so this basically allows an additional 802.1q vlan tag to be added to the packet without triggering encryption on that tag So what this means is the VLAN tag can be sent in clear or unencrypted form thereby enabling the service provider equipment to read and handle the VLAN tag frames without decrypting the entire data packet. So this can be enabled on the physical port via this CLI and once you enable this clear tag on the physical port all the sub interface under that physical port will use clear tag for that physical port. The second enhancement that was brought into the 802.1e standard was MKE for destination MAC tuning. So what this feature enable is basically configuring your MKE protocol to use broadcast destination address for its EPOL messages and this helps van max like deployments in several ways. So one of the things that was observed was some of the service provider equipments might not forward multicast frames properly. and which basically can disrupt your mke key exchanges so setting up this destination address for broadcast ensures that your epol frames are forwarded across all the provider equipments avoiding issues where in spe- specific switches could uh, drop or ignore multicast frames another benefit of this feature is based basically for enabling uh, point to multi point connections So by broadcasting epol messages mk can reach multiple endpoints simultaneously and this essentially is point to multi point wan max x setups wherein one device may need to establish secure associations with multiple peers across a shared ethernet network So this can be enabled using the CLI epol destination broadcast under the interface itself and this can be used with or without clear tag command Uh, on the interface itself the third enhancement is mke pol ether type tuning so this basically ensures that the ethernet frames are correctly processed by network devices especially the provider bridges typically the ether type for epol is 888e which may be treated differently by these devices or the provider bridges by changing the ether type to a different custom value like 876f we prevent the provider bridge from misinterpreting the frame and allowing it to be handled as a regular ethernet frame this adjustment can be applied with or without clear tag and basically can be enabled via the epol ether type 876f cli So now let's look at what the van max a configuration looks like. So van max a configuration is very similar to how we configure our traditional max a as well. And in this example what we are trying to do is we are trying to establish secure connectivity between switch 1 and switch 2 which is separated by a layer 2 service provider or multiple layer 2 hops in between. So if we talk about the configuration the first thing that we do is we configure a key chain along with key string which is same on both the switch 1 and switch 2 
Then we go ahead and enable MK policy and define what max x cipher suit that we want to use. Once this is done, we go ahead on the interface, enable max x and call the policy that we have configured and the key chain and the key pre-shared key that we have configured earlier already. So this is something that is similar to what we always do for our MaxSec or LAN MaxSec configuration as well. So the things that change in WAN MaxSec is basically some of the enhancement that we talked about. So the capability to have your dot one q tag in clear, your capability to change the ePOL destination address to broadcast, and your capability to change the ether type to 876F or a custom ether type that ensures you're able to transmit those packets via the hops in between or via your provider which. Moving on, now let's look at some of the most common WAN MaxSec deployment scenarios. So one of the common use case that we come across is VLAN based E-Line service. And when we talk about an E-Line service, it is basically a point to point Ethernet virtual circuit that provides a dedicated path for communication between two endpoints. This service is ideal for connecting campuses or your campus to branch or towards your data center. And to further enhance the security over this link, what we do is we apply MaxSec that ensures data integrity and confidentiality at layer two. So if we talk about E-Line service design, we could have one VLAN, for example, VLAN 10 being extended from CE1 to CE2, another VLAN, VLAN 20, that could be extended from CE1 to CE3. So if we talk about the security associations from the CE perspective, each CE establishes specific SA for both transmitting and receiving encrypted data, for example, here CE1 has transmission SA to CE2 and CE3 while receiving from CE2 and CE3. This bidirectional configuration allows CE1 to securely send the data to CE2 and CE3 and it also establishes a secure receiving channel from CE2 and CE3 as well. So by setting up these SAs over MaxSec enabled PE links, data integrity and confidentiality are ensured throughout the network even as the traffic passes across your provider bridge or across your MPLS code. So this approach not only secures each link with MaxSec, but also provide controlled encrypted communication pathway tailored for point to point connectivities. So another very common deployment that we usually see is the VLAN based ELAN service or which is also point to multi point deployment in a form of layer to VPN service that enables any to any connectivity. So this type of service is commonly implemented using VLAN tagging, which creates a virtual LAN that spans multiple customer location over a shared MPLS or a shared ethernet network. So if we talk about the design itself, we have VLAN 10 that is extended from CE1 to CE2 and CE3, and we have VLAN 20 that is extended from CE1 to CE4 and CE5. So talking about the security association, Security association enable encrypted multi-point communication between the customer edge devices. And basically from this example, CE1 transmit encrypted traffic from CE2 and CE3 using a shared SA and separately to a CE4 and CE5 and using another shared SA, allowing each group to decrypt traffic as intended. And on the receiving side, CE1 accept encrypted traffic from CE2, CE3, CE4 and CE5 basically ensuring a secure any to any connectivity across the van while maintaining efficiency with grouped SA. One thing to note here for eLAN or point to multi point services, we need the destination ePOL MAC to be broadcast so that you can send out the shared SAs from your C's for multi point communication. So another use case that is becoming very popular among our customers is basically extending a secure channel from your on-prem all the way to cloud providers. So with the rapid growth in cloud application, we see a need of establishing a secure encrypted channel from your on-prem devices all the way to your cloud service providers. So this design is ensures secure encrypted connectivity from your on-prem infra to your cloud service provider and basically will ensure that the sensitive data remains encrypted as it travels across your colo providers or your van infrastructure protecting it from potential security breaches during the transmission to and from the cloud environments. 
and if we talk about these colo providers basically the colo fabrics can provide on demand ethernet connectivity services with re resilient low latency e line or e lan services and leveraging these e line e lan services the catalyst 9000 switches can establish unique mk sessions per vlan based on sub interface for multiple vlans across the colo network and then basically can terminate the max accessions directly onto the public cloud networks so for this deployment scenario for an instance if you have vlan 10 to vlan 20 that needs to be extended towards your cloud service provider leveraging the catalyst 9000 van max capabilities you can establish unique mk session for all of these different vlans and then your colo provider can use any of your tunneling capability to tunnel all these vlans from your on-prem network towards your cloud service provider so this way you are establishing an end-to-end -end secure connectivity from your on-prem to your cloud infrastructure one thing to keep in mind is you will have to use epol destination mac address to be broadcast in order to establish a connect a secure connectivity for multiple vlans from your on-prem environment to your cloud environment so before we wrap up the video let's look at some of the platforms that support van maxec and its associated scale so if you have a use case for van maxec van maxec as of now is supported on our silicon one x boxes 9500x and 9600x the 9300X and 9400X are hardware capable and software capabilities can be brought in in future. The Catalyst 9200 to 9600 does not support WAN MAXEC. So if you have a use case for WAN MAXEC, the Catalyst 9500X and 9600X are the go-to box to achieve those use cases. And from the scale perspective, we support 192 sessions on the Catalyst 9500X and 9600X. So with that, We'll finish this video and I hope this was informative and I would like to thank you for viewing.